Welcome back to our discussion of creating Java web applications. In this video, we're going to take a first look at something known as the deployment descriptor. It's a very important file that's part of our application. What is a deployment descriptor? A deployment descriptor is an XML, extensible markup language, based text file whose elements describe how to assemble and deploy the unit, in this case our JSP web application, into a specific environment. So it's something that has command to help the server build our application whenever we need it to start. Deployment descriptor elements contain behavioral information about components not included directly in code. So it's a separate file. The purpose of a deployment descriptor is to tell the deployer, in our case a web server, how to deploy an application, not to tell the server how to manage components at runtime. Think about this for a moment. What happens is the very first time we deploy and put our files up on the server, the deployment descriptor is accessed and the server will then set up our application based on the commands or elements that are part of that deployer descriptor. Many different things we can set here, such as what is the default file that will run when our application is accessed, uh, maybe some initialization parameters, and other things connections to servlets, as we'll see in a later set of videos. With Java-based web applications, the deployment descriptor is stored in a file called web.xml. We'll see that in a moment as we look at our guessing game with JSP-only example. With XML, each element in the file consists of a tag and a value, as shown with this following syntax. We'll see the exact web XML file for our current application in just a moment. Notice that delimiters for XML are very similar to HTML. Let's have a look at the deployment descriptor or the web.xml file for our current example, the guessing game with JSP only version. There are actually two ways in Eclipse that we can view the web.xml file. One, you'll notice at the top of my Eclipse version, it shows deployment descriptor. I can double click on this, and the web.xml file will appear in the editor. We'll close that for a minute and show you how you can access it the second way. The actual file itself is stored under the folder web inf. If I expand that, I can see it. I can also double click directly on the file, and I see that again as well. Currently, the web.xml file is probably at the most minimal state it can be for a web application. In this case, there's only a couple things indicated in the file. Before we explore what it says in here, let's show the two different ways we can look at this file. This often escapes people's notice because if you'll see at the bottom of the editor window, there are two tabs, source and design. Currently, we're viewing WebXML in the source mode, meaning I can see the exact text which is stored in the file. I'm going to double click on the WebXML tab of the editor so that we get a larger view of this. The second tab at the bottom is Design View. Click on that to see what happens. This is just another way to view the same information. If someone does not like to look at XML source code, they can view all the elements listed here in a list. If I go back and forth, let's say, let's look at the web app ID, shows web app underscore ID. If I go back and look at the source, I can see that under web app tag, there is eventually an ID and it matches what was in that list. In the XML version, elements are provided by tags and either as arguments for those tags or as content between the markup tags. So display name marks up the words guessing game JSP only. I can see that again in design. If I look at display name listed here, this is an element, E icon for element, and over here is the value also see the welcome file list. The welcome file list is just about the only thing that's currently in our web XML file that we would be interested in changing. The welcome file is the file that is going to be searched for by default on your server whenever the application is accessed without a specific file name in mind. 
many times you've been to websites where you type in something like www.uga.edu, and it would go to a specific page, usually the home page of the website that you're accessing. In that URL, we did not include a file name. That's because it knows what the welcome file name should be. That was set up by the deployer. In our case, we're using index.jsp as our welcome page. Let's see how we can adjust some of these. Let's go back to source. I usually like to clean this up and keep only the welcome file that I have. So let's delete a couple. Let's delete the first indexes because we don't need those. Index.html and index.htm. You can see we can edit the web.xml file directly in the source. If I view the design now, we see that those two have disappeared. I can also edit in the design view. Maybe I right click on this one and remove. You see that it's gone. I can make changes. I can change that to default.html. Or I can hit shift to select more than one, right click and remove. And we see that we only have welcome file is index.jsp. So I cleaned that up a little. Wasn't really necessary, but it's a good introduction to how we might edit the web.xml file. As I look back at the source, I see that the changes I've made in the design view are also reflected here. Notice the asterisks by WebXML in the tab of the editor window. This asterisk indicates that we have not yet saved the file. So hit save, asterisk disappears. Watch for some of those helpful hints in Eclipse as it tells you how to uh, work with your application. We're going to stop here with WebXML. Just a quick introduction. As we work with servlets and more complicated web applications, we're going to be doing a lot more with the web.xml file. We'll revisit again at that time. This has been a Piercy production.